Alright, today we're going to be replacing the front brake pads and rotors on a 2011 Chevy Equinox. Now keep in mind that the process we go through here today is going to be the same or similar on a lot of other vehicles. So even if you don't have an Equinox or a GM vehicle, go ahead and watch the video. It might help you out. Now I will say that I replaced the passenger side uh, brake pads and rotor on this vehicle last night. And they were perfect. I think they're only two years old. Uh, but the driver's side uh, rotor has a warp. And I believe I can hear the pad is worn down uh, to the wear tab. So uh, either we have a bad uh, caliper or possibly a, a stuck slide pin. So we'll get into that once we get it taken apart. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, I have the vehicle up off the ground and supported by a jack and a jack stand. The first thing we're going to do is remove these 14 millimeter caliper bolts. Now these uh, caliper bolts attach the caliper itself to this caliper bracket uh, by threading into the slide pin. Okay, so it's a little bit different than some you might see. Uh, there's one on the top here and there's one on the bottom right there. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. And our garage helper today is Connor. He's uh, helping us out as you can see. All right, so it went pretty easily. So some of you may have seen uh, my last video was a little tribute to our garage buddy Keith. Unfortunately, we lost Keith about a month ago. And uh, it's been hard coming back out here, I'll be honest. I mean, it's uh, it's not the same out here without him. I miss him terribly, but uh, we have Connor, and uh, we're happy to be back in the uh, garage here. Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh, get something to pry this caliper off with. Usually it's not just going to slide off. We can give it a gentle tap or we can use a, uh, a small pry bar. Okay, let me grab something. All right, so I just have this little pry bar here, but you could also use a, you know, a flat screwdriver. Or a, you could also take a ball peen hammer and kind of tap it. Um, it shouldn't be on there. And if the caliper is working correctly, the piston should compress uh, and it should slide off and this one's not on there too too awful tight really what we want to do is get underneath it here okay and then you're going to want to take uh, a piece of wire or uh, they sell these caliper hangers, and I'll link to all the parts and uh, tools that I'm using here down below. But uh, we'll just hang it up off the coil spring here. Okay, these are awful handy. I used to just use wire. You can use a coat hanger, wire, whatever, whatever you've got. Oh, there goes my light. All right, so next we're going to remove these 18 millimeter caliper bracket bolts. There's one here, and there's one underneath. I don't know if you can see it down there by my finger. Okay, I'm pointing at it. Uh, and I can see here, there's plenty of pad on these uh, brake pads here. There's plenty of meat left on them. Uh, so I'm not sure where the where the noise was coming from. I know, the, I know for sure that the rotor is warped. Uh, but clearly the pads are still in good shape. So we'll continue on here. Uh, let me go ahead and grab my ratchet in an 18 millimeter for these. All right, these ones are uh, torqued down to like 90 pounds, I believe. So I've got a pipe on here just to get it started. Okay, move on to the bottom one. Let's uh, take this over to a table and we'll get it cleaned up. All right, my brake pads came with new hardware, so I'm going to go ahead and remove these. Um, definitely want to replace these uh, if you're doing your brakes. All right, let's go ahead and pull the slide pins here. And these are moving freely, so uh, I'm not exactly sure why. This one's not quite as free as this one. This one's moving easily. This one is a little bit 
tight. So possibly this is the one that's causing the uh, rotor to warp. Um, but we're going to pull them out. And I did get new caliper pin boots. If you didn't buy uh, new slide pin boots, uh, be careful. You don't want to tear these. They're inexpensive, so I would recommend getting them if you're doing the job. But Okay, yeah, that one's definitely a little bit more dry than this one. All right, I'm just going to throw these in a pan here. Spray them down with some uh, brake cleaner. Let those soak them in it. Now I'm just going to kind of spray this down as well with some brake parts cleaner. Um, then we're going to take a wire brush and we're going to, especially where those, those brake tins were, you want to get those nice and clean because you need those to sit as flush as possible. I have had, and I even have some videos out there, I think, uh, issues where the tins don't sit uh, like they should. I mean, they're just lifted a little bit because of rust and whatnot. And uh, it makes the brake pads real tight. So take your time and clean it up. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to do is uh, spray some brake parts cleaner down in these uh, slide pin holes and kind of let that set while we go remove the rotor. Okay, so let me get this cleaned up and then we'll move on to the rotor. All right, sometimes the uh, rotor is on there pretty good and some rust builds up here on the, on the bearing. So what we're going to do is uh, just take some penetrating fluid. I'm going to drop a little into each stud hole as well. And usually you're going to want to let that set. And you can also use heat. Uh, just be careful because obviously there's grease in the uh, wheel bearing. And you don't want to thin that out too much. But just going to give it some taps. What we're trying to do here is just kind of help the uh, penetrating fluid get in a little further. Okay. Tap it from the back side. That's what really what we want to do. There it goes. And I keep these, I use these all the time to hold down tarps and different things, so uh, I've got a bunch of rotors laying around. Alright, today we're installing AC Delco Professional uh, Rotors. Last time I used the uh, Power Stop uh, rotors and pads, um, and I guess they've been okay. I had them on my truck as well, uh, but to today I thought we'd go right back to the old AC Delco. And they did with my truck as well on the front. Uh, so you want to do front and back. If there's a film on it, sometimes, the depending on the rotors you buy, there won't be any film. But I want to get that anti-corrosion film or grease, whatever they put on it so they don't rust. Uh, just get that off. All right, let's go ahead and throw this on real quick. All right. And if we had the Torx, we'd put that in, but do not over-tighten it. All right, let's go check the caliper bracket. All right, pay attention to the boots. Um, there is a specific way that to go. This side here is going to go down into the bracket. Get one side started and kind of pinch the rest in. Just like that. Hopefully you saw it. I can't do it with gloves, so I took my gloves off. Okay. They don't all go that way. Sometimes you can put them on the, the uh, pins and just kind of push the pin, compress the pin in, and they seat. Okay. Speaking of the pins, let me grab those. All right, I've got the pins all cleaned up. Now, I will mention that um, the pin that had a little bit more resistance is this one. I believe that's by design. So this goes in. It's a rubber end, and it compresses slightly. So it's supposed to uh, have a little bit of resistance on it, Okay. Uh, what we're going to use is some of this ultra, ultra, ultra brake parts uh, lubricant um, to lube them up. And you don't want to overdo it, but you definitely want to get some in there so that when you work them back and forth, it'll work around. I'm going to get up where the boot sits as well. And I don't think it matters, but I was paying attention when I pulled this one out. This has the little rubber tip on it, and it was this one here because it had a little barcode. So I'm just going to go ahead and push the pin in all the way, and then you should see the uh, boot 
snap up over the lip. Okay, and then you may have a little vacuum in there like I've got right now, but that's not a big deal. Do the same with this one. And then we'll clean up the grease. Let me get a fresh rag here. All right. And you can just double check that they're moving freely, and they are. All right, next we have the brake tins here is what I call them, all right? There's usually a ridge that these sit on. They should snap on like that. And uh, when you're putting your pads in, I'm just going to point it out now because it's going to be easier. These provide a little bit of spring tension. So when you go to put your pads on, if they don't seem like they're fitting, um, and we'll test it before we, we put it in place, you want to make sure that you're pushing this down a little bit so you can start with the bottom here, or in this case the bottom, um, and then slide them on, okay? And if they don't seem like they're fitting nice and tight, more wire brush. All right. And I'm just going to get one started here. Now the uh, bolt goes through the steering knuckle and threads into the bracket. So this bracket goes between the steering knuckle and the rotor, okay? I don't think it can go any other way, but I just thought I'd point that out in case it wasn't obvious when I removed it. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll post the uh, torque specs down in the uh, the detail section, okay? Let me grab my torque wrench real quick. 92 foot-pounds on this one. And we're using my Tecton here. I'm going to link to this down below because I find these torque wrenches are just awesome for the price, okay? I was using the uh, Harbor Freight torque wrenches, and I've, I've stripped those out. I gave one away recently to... Uh, co-worker well he's moving on now but I'm like be careful because it lets go I'm gonna switch positions here is that one that's it all right I applied a thin layer of grease here on the back just where the uh, piston of the caliper meets the face of the pad and I'm just going to go ahead and get this in place and obviously you want to try not to get any grease on the pad or the rotor. And again you may need to take your finger and just kind of pull this tab back a little bit. It's uh, supposed to be springy to provide tension on the pad. You don't want the pads just sort of flopping around in there, right? All right, we're in good shape there. Now we need to take a uh, C-clamp and compress this piston, and this will tell us if this uh, caliper is bad or not. Um, so let's go ahead and grab that. All right, so what we're going to do is take an old pad, which I really hate to even discard these because they're in such great shape. So honestly, I should have checked them before I bought the parts because I would not have bought pads, but... Uh, I'm going to take our C-clamp and wind it in gently, slowly. Uh, what I usually do is give it a twist, let the uh, let the piston relax, the hydraulics will relax because we're pushing fluid back. And incidentally, I do have the cap off the master cylinder. Uh, and I'll show you that because we're going to put the cap back on. Okay, And that piston is compressing easily. So I would say that we don't have a bad... A bad caliper. So I'm not exactly sure why the rotor warped. It, again, it was a power stop. Um, and it was just this side. So I don't know if it was real hot. And somebody went through a puddle. But uh, 
Usually it's an indication of uh, either a stuck pin or a stuck caliper piston causing the uh, face of the brake pad to maintain contact with the rotor which increases uh, the heat substantially and you can tell if you go walk around and press on the outside of your wheels a lot of times and also the smell. <laughs> So that's it. I've got that comp that compressed all the way. And when you do that, be sure that you don't have any of the, the piston boot. You don't want to pinch it. And these again were 14 millimeter. And these go through the uh, caliper bracket or the caliper itself into the caliper bracket. And we'll take our hanger off. And you may have to manually push the pins in. Uh, to get this kind of in, in place and then we need to torque these down I think these are 20 foot pounds again I'm gonna have all the torque specs down below so hopefully you found this video helpful uh, I plan on being out here a lot more I know I haven't been doing many uh, poor mr. Keith was sick for a while and he was a fighter and uh, He's loved dearly. I know. Uh, I know he made several appearances in many of my past videos, and uh, he was always out here with me. So, anyways, if you found the video helpful, please give me that thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this type of stuff, and you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. I do all kinds of uh, repair videos, ATV repair, uh, auto repair, obviously, home improvement, appliances. Um, I need to grab a wrench because that's actually spinning. Uh, which is what I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then I need to torque it down to uh, 20 foot pounds, okay? Last thing we're going to do after I torque these down is uh, replace the master cylinder cap. Pump the brakes before you drive it. Make sure the vehicle is going to stop. Uh, and then kind of top off your brake fluid. You might have pushed some out. Depending on how full your uh, brake system was, your reservoir and your overall system. So you may need to top that off. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And uh, leave questions and comments below. And take care of yourself. And be kind to others. All right.